number 86, Worthy Lending versus New Style Contractors. Council, whenever you're ready. Good afternoon and thank you. May it please the court, Richard Haddad for Worthy Lending. I would like to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. You have two minutes. Thank you. When Worthy Lending sent New Style the notice of assignment, which is found at page 37 of the record, advising New Style that Checkmate had assigned to Worthy all its accounts as collateral security, and a direction that payments could only be made to Worthy to get a discharge under Uniform Commercial Code Section 9406, New Style had only two ways to get a discharge of its obligation. One, it could pay Worthy in accordance with the notice set forth at page 37 of the, of the record. Or two, if it had any question with respect to the uh, notice that it had received, they could have asked, new, they could have asked Worthy Lending under 9406C to supply uh, evidence. Because what 9406A says is after receipt of the notification, the account debtor may discharge its obligation only by paying the s and &E and may not discharge the obligation by paying the s and or. And if you have any question, you request proof of the assignment under 9406 C, and only there if we fail- There was no request for proof of the assignment in this case, was there? Th th there was none. What New Style did is they ignored the notice. The notice expressly says on it, right there on its face, so the first page in bold, if you pay the borrower, if you pay checkmate, you will not be discharged from that obligation. Did you have to wait for a default before sending the notice? No, we did not. There are some cases that the uh, defendant has relied upon in which uh, their default was a prerequisite. Our agreement is set forth in section 4K of the, uh, of the agreement, which on page 24 of the record says we can give notice immediately or, or after default. So essentially the terms of your loan were such that you could call some part of the outstanding balance at will. Well, we could collect directly from the yeah, account even if, even if they were So they'd run up $2 million, let's say, and they weren't in default, you could still uh, acquire some of the, of the security directly. Yes, we could collect and the collateral And effectively reduce, the, reduce the account balance, divert their cash flow to pay down the loan. Well, that's the essence of revolving credit, which is what yeah. they had here. You get to borrow against a certain percentage of your accounts receivable and your, mm -hmm. your inventory, and as payments come in, more availability is created, and as you issue new invoices, you get more availability and can borrow uh, more money. Right, and but here, here the, the, the amount of revolving credit is really effectively kind of determined by you discretionarily when you decide you want to send a notice. Uh, well, and, it, it's, and determined based upon, yeah. it's determined based upon the scope of the, of the loan agreement and the maximum amount of collateral. Here, loans were advanced, mm -hmm. collateral was uh, provided, and then, unfortunately, what occurred is collateral uh, was, was diverted and money was paid to checkmate. Was there something that caused you to send the notice? Excuse me? Was there something that caused you to send the notice when you did? Uh, it was the introduction of the financing. It was at the outset of the financing arrangement that the client uh, lender sent the notice. And that, that's common in, in asset-based financing. Okay. It's designed to encourage the flow to apply, have payments applied immediately, and therefore make more money available for borrowing and promoting uh, the commerce and promoting the borrowing and lending so that the borrower can access its assets as rapidly uh, as possible. Can I ask you, what would, what would be the utility of an assignment if we were to adopt the rule that you're proposing today? Uh, is there a role for an assignment or is a security interest of the type you had all that's ever required in these types of uh, financing arrangements? Right, well, th there's actually, when we think about what, what is an assignment, as explained in the official comments and in the definitions to the Uniform uh, Commercial Code, there can be two different kinds of, multiple kinds of assignments. There can be an outright sale and assignment. For example, a factor. They buy a $100 receivable for $80. They give the, the, the borrower $80, and the factor hopes to collect the whole 100, and if they collect the 100, they keep the extra 20. They're making a profit on it. 
a lender which, who takes an assignment as collateral security, if we got the 100 cents uh, paid on, on the receivable, but only $80 uh, was due on the loan, well, that money would be paid over to the uh, borrower. That would not be a windfall uh, for us. So what, what the suggestion by the, uh, by the defendant and implied in, in, in the lower court uh, deci decision that we need to have a separate document called assignment would truly, A, exalt form over substance, but B, disregard the specific provisions within the Uniform Commercial Code within Article 9 that say, as we look at this, what is a secured party? Is, well, the, is the UCC-1 filing um, important to your claim, or if they didn't exist, you'd still have, the, you'd still have your claim? Well, under uh, the, the filing, the purpose of the UCC-1 filing is, to, is twofold. Number one is to perfect the security yeah, I guess I'm asking something different. Suppose, suppose you hadn't done, suppose you hadn't made the UCC-1 filings, could you still prevail here? Um, I, I think that as between us and the borrower, mm -hmm. the obligation and the rights were, provide, were transferred to us in the loan in the agreement. agreement. And it provided that we have the right directly to give the notice, mm -hmm. refer, called a notice of assignment. So the parties to the agreement recognized that what the nature of this transaction was, was an assignment as collateral, because those words are used right there in 4K, notice of assignment, that's what's in the notice itself. So we have the notice of assignment. The UCC filing is really to give uh, public notice, but as between us, the lender, and the account debtor, once the account debtor receives the notice, they're obligated to pay the lender to get that discharge. The General Motors case that, that this court decided uh, some years ago uh, refers to that and said, well, you might have to, you're not really paying twice, you're really only paying once to get the discharge. What you did with the rest of your money, that might have been a gift. You took that risk. Mm -hmm. When you wrote that check for a million four, this isn't, you know, 20 bucks, I'll take the risk. When you wrote that check for a million four, in total disregard of that notice, you're undermining our rights to the collateral, and you're acting contrary to the provisions set forth and in the so Uniform Commercial Code. Your view is, with respect to assignment, whether it's outright ownership or security interest, it doesn't matter. Uh, that, that's my view. It's not only my view. It's also the view of the uh, permanent editorial board uh, commentaries, and they explain precisely why that's uh, so important as a policy matter and a proper interpretation of the UCC. And one of the reasons is to protect the new styles of this world so that they don't have to dig in and see what kind of, what's the nature of the relationship. If they're interested, they can ask us, which they didn't do. But if, they're, if they don't make that, we don't want to pose upon them the burden of figuring it out. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Good afternoon. May it please the court, Glenn Berger, Jaffe and Asher, Council for New Style Contractors. Uh, the court below correctly, the courts below correctly decided this. It's undisputed that Worthy has no assignment. They pleaded a single cause of action under UCC 9607. That provision explicitly states that it has no direct recourse against strangers to the lending relationship. Well, does, uh, where does it say that? Uh, 9607E. That just says it doesn't establish any rights itself. Yes. It doesn't say anything about rec the word recourse isn't in there. Pardon me? I don't think the word recourse is in there. Oh, the recourse right? may, oh, I'm sorry, recourse may not be, uh, yeah. uh, the word recourse isn't there, but it so says it, it, it provides. So it just says no, it doesn't create any rights. Yes, it does not create any rights. But doesn't 406 create rights? I'm sorry, just 406? 406, as against uh, an, um, an account debtor when mm -hmm. there's been an assignment, then yep. there would be rights. But so this does turn then on the assignment, not so much on which section the claim is brought under. Well, it, the claim is brought under 9607, yeah. which provides no rights. And yes, I'm saying that there is no, uh, there being no assignment, uh, the, there is no direct recourse against my client. So the permanent editorial board disagrees with you? Yes. Um, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the issue of the um, <coughs> uh, lack of, of the UCC-1, because it shows how the uh, permanent editorial board's opinion really goes too far. I mean, if there were uh, a, a, a 
secured creditor or a lender with an unperfected security interest could claim to be owner of an account under that, uh, under that provision, and that would not be right. Uh, while a UCC-1 may not be necessary for a uh, lender to have recourse against its borrower, it, does, it is required for it to have recourse against anybody else. And so does it matter that here they did file the UCC-1s and did they check the box designating them as assignments on the form? I'm sorry, I didn't. The, sure, the form on the box that is checked on the UCC-1 is assignment for the security interest. There is, but there was no assignment. Well, that's the box that says on the UCC-1. But I, I understand, but there, but there was no assignment in this case. And, so your uh, argument is they checked the wrong box. Well, UCC-1 is not, does not create the security okay. interest. As, as the court knows, it simply is what's needed to perfect it. So a person could say they have collateral in anything they want on UCC-1, but it better be there in the security mm -hmm. agreement. Otherwise, it's not valid. Uh, likewise, if there's no assignment, we're saying that there is no... Uh, uh, the notice of assignment that was sent is of no force and effect. And, we, and the cases we cite will say that, um, in fact, even if that notice is disregarded, if there is no underlying assignment, then the notice of assignment is of no force and effect. In this case, by the way, it was not disregarded. It would, uh, my uh, client did actually ask, uh, inquire of um, Checkmate. It, the vendor that provided the goods and services, the vendor who invoiced it, and, uh, and it was told that there was a dispute. But the point is that there's uh, uh, absolutely no, um, uh, no assignment in this case. And the, court, the cases we have here, including those in New York and other cases where we cited, there is no, um, if there is no, no, no underlying assignment, then there is no so, uh, so, valid. So to be assignment. clear, you're saying they had to have some separate documentation of a straight assignment. Yes, in order Without to... Without that, there's no way to, to recognize uh, a right, let's put it that way, to be able to demand that you pay them instead of the people you owe. No, Correct? actually, I, I, I want to clarify that. Thank you. you. Yes, please. Thank you. What I'm saying is that a secured creditor in Worthy's position mm -hmm. can seek to recover on its collateral. Its interest is in collateral. It can seek to recover on accounts receivable as its collateral. It, can, it has recourse against its borrower. It has recourse against its collateral. It has recourse against the proceeds of that collateral. What it doesn't have is the right to impose direct uh, liability on personal liability on the account debtors unless there's an assignment. That is what we're saying. And as I, uh, as I said, the, the interest, where these interests are solely in the collateral. If you, for example, uh, pay, if there's an assignment and you pay the predecessor an in interest, you haven't satisfied the debt. That's a very basic uh, premise. But that's not the case with the security interest. Here is the current holder of that account, Checkmate, that provided the goods and services, invoiced my client, and, um, and told my client, by the way, to disregard uh, were these notices, but but aside from that, uh, the fact is that it's um, uh, that it is the owner of the account, and therefore uh, there is nothing wrong, or at least uh, my client cannot be personally held liable for having paid the vendor who pay who provided the services if there's not been an assignment of the interest. If, so, if your client suspects there's a dispute, and, and maybe there is an assignment, why why not seek uh, a judicial declaration, or why not try and resolve this question? I understand. Um, my client faces a Hobson's choice, and a lot of these cases have that where um, they are a general contractor, you have subcontractors that are uh, invoicing it, and sub subcontractors, uh, the, the money is pres presumably being paid for, and it's caught between the lien law, where it's required by law to satisfy those obligations, and, um, and in either 9607 or 9406 of the UCC where there's financing given to the subcontractor. Um, in that case, it's really facing an impossible choice. It happens to be in this particular case, since there was no actual assignment, that um, the case law we cite says that there is no consequence to my client for having, if they did not in make that inquiry about it, although they did with their actual vendor. 
I guess you could have interpleaded the money, right? But then your subcontractor doesn't get paid for a while. That's right. I mean, these, these public projects are going to go down the tubes if, um, if subcontractors aren't being paid, plus they're liable personally for uh, under the lien law. So that's the uh, dilemma that my client was faced as a factual matter. But the point is that um, it, as a legal matter here, since there was no assignment, uh, that my client should not be made personally liable. They certainly they could have the option to pay the um, pay worthy and under the contract as between worthy and um, checkmate. That's perhaps the worthy is the one entitled to that payment. But the question is whether my client can be retroactively liable for payments it already made to Checkmate. And so what would your liability have been, do you think, if you paid worthy? Well, uh, the liability would be, on the other hand, that they would have been uh, uh, personally liable under the lien law for not paying its subcontractors. And again, I don't see why, and I don't think it's been raised in the papers of, uh, of the appellant as to why they can't just get an assignment. You know, you're talking about a sophisticated commercial transaction. It seems like the easiest thing in the world to be able to get an assignment. Although they say it's a burden, I don't understand how it is. It seems like the simplest thing in the world to be able to get an assignment. And even if they don't, as I say, they still have recourse against their borrower and against their collateral. Well, it seems one possible answer to that question is under 9607, they don't have to get an assignment. They don't have to, I'm sorry. Get an assignment. Right. Oh, well, but the point is that uh, what I'm saying is under 9607E, if they don't, then they have no rights under that section itself. That section confers no rights uh, of liability upon a stranger to that lending relationship as my client is. That's all, Council? Yes, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Checkmate telling the borrower to disregard the notice is precisely uh, the problem. And it's precisely the reason why 9406C says if you have a question, ask the secured party. Ask the lender. Is there a don't, business reason why you don't want an assignment, why you, why you prefer a security interest to an assignment? It, it, well, it, it's the nature of the financing tr financial transaction. What we are, it, and a, a security interest is a collateral assignment. Yeah. That, that's actually what it is. It, the magic. You actually have the claim assigned to yourself, right? We, 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 have, we have the claim assigned to us as collateral security. We don't own it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I'm collateral. I'm asking what you could own it, right? You, you, you could own it, but then we'd get the windfall that I spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. We'd collect the million well, four, and if they only were owed a million, if we were only owed a million at the time, we'd have got a four hundred thousand dollar windfall. Mm -hmm. Instead, we were owed three million, and we didn't get paid anything. So we're we're the one out of luck here. But uh, had they paid us, and had there been a surplus, the money would go to check uh, to checkmate. Um, the nine. 102.73 provides, sets forth the definition of secured party, and it includes both a secured lender with a security interest or a person who buys the accounts with an outright assignment. So the mm -hmm. definition is broad enough to cover both under 9.102.71. Counselor, is there a current dispute now between Worthy and Checkmate over there, who owns Checkmates? There never was a dispute. There never was a dispute. There is no dispute in the record. There is no dispute pleaded. There was no dispute. They now say there was a dispute. When we look at what the lower court held, and the lower court said, well, paragraph 13 of the complaint admits a dispute. Oh, no, it does not. It does not admit a dispute. Look at paragraph 13 of the complaint. It says they owe the money. It says there's a default. But a default is not a dispute, so as to prevent us from enforcing our rights. If, if a default were a dispute, collateral would be worthless because the only time the only time you look to your collateral is when the borrower stops paying we would that's much rather true. just get paid that's not true in this case right i mean you didn't have to wait for a default we would well, no to, to collect we, we certainly wouldn't we certainly wouldn't be suing had the borrower paid us had we been paid mm -hmm. currently by our borrower as required we wouldn't be suing uh, new style new style uh it took you know got that risk by disregarding the notice 
by listening to Checkmate, by ignoring the definitions in the Uniform Commercial Code, and I think the permanent editorial board policy lays it out very, very clearly as to saying that there's no reason to require an assignment. And, and, and if, if, we, we, if we disagree with you, that means you're out, there's no other recourse, no other way to get paid? Uh, there's no other way to get paid from uh, New Style if you were going to uh, disagree with us. Right. Checkmate went bankrupt because that's what happens. It's when companies get into financial difficulty that they tell their customers, hey, don't pay the bank. Pay me. So did you file a proof of claim in the bankruptcy? Uh, we got a, a very okay. small amount in, in the bankruptcy. The debt still exceeds uh, the million four, although the lien law claims that, that were uh, referenced earlier, th those were all satisfied and paid. That, that's not a dispute. But, but there, is, there is no dispute, to answer Your Honor's question, there is no dispute in the record. There's no dispute by, check, by checkmate that they uh, gave us the security interest, that they signed the security agreement, that they authorized us to give the notice, and that we did so with, with, uh, with their permission. Thank so you, we, Mr. Haddad. Thank you.